Christine with you today and I've got a video today for you about coloring. Um, I like to use markers sometimes when I'm coloring but I also like to use colored pencils and um, when I use colored pencils I like them to have a very blended seamless look and I achieve that through the use of Gamsol and a lot of people have asked me how I blend my colored pencils, what is Gamsol, how is it used and so I thought I would do a quick little video today to explain a little bit about it, where you can buy it and what it is. So this is my little bottle of Gamsol. I bought a small one uh, because I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or if it was gonna be easy to use. Um, and this little bottle you can see is not, I haven't used very much um, and I've had it for, my gosh, months. Um, so it definitely stretches a long way. Gamsol is pure odorless mineral spirits. Um, it is different from the painter's mineral spirits that you can buy in the craft store like Michael's um, or someplace like that. The, um, the, the agent in it that's very smelly has been taken out. So it is just a little bit more purified um, than just regular mineral spirits like uh, what you would use to clean your paint brushes or whatnot. Um, and the way that it works is um, it dissolves uh, the wax in the color pencil. So when you apply it, the wax dissolves and you can push the pigment around and blend it very easily. It evaporates very quickly, so you're not going to be left with a big oily um, spot on your paper. And um, once it's once it's evaporated, um, the the colors it just looks like you did a really great job of blending. Um, and like I said, if you do it correctly, you get a really nice seamless look. Um, my the bottle that I bought is from this company called Inky Antics. I found it online, and what I really love about it is that it has this spongy dauber top to it okay um and the way you apply gamsol is with these paper stumps and you can buy these um in packages um at michael's i got i have a whole bunch of them here um and what you do is you when you're ready to apply it, you take the stump and you just kind of press it on the top and you see how it's the stump looks wet okay because it's got the gamsol on it and then you apply that and you blend it like in a circular motion and i'll show you how to do that in just a few seconds what you'll find when you use your uh, paper stumps to blend is that the color some of the color will end up on the stump so you can see this one has some red on it the last time i used it i must have uh, used something with red if i were to uh, let's say I put down yellow or, or blue or pink or some color here with color pencil and then I tried to blend it with this stump without cleaning it first. Some of this red that's still on here would be transferred down onto my new um, color and I don't want that to happen. So what you do is it's good to have a good supply of these so you can just switch back and forth between them quickly. But once they're all dry and it's time to start a new coloring session, you just get a piece of sandpaper and you take the stump and you just scrape, scrape it over the sandpaper like this. You can see that red is coming off on the sandpaper. And then what happens is two things, you get rid of the red color that was on there and you get a nice little sharpened tip. Um, for use the next time. So it's if you're going to get Gamsol to use, you do need to get some of these paper stumps and also just get yourself a, a piece of sandpaper. This is 150 grit and it works pretty well. It doesn't take too much off of the tip here. Um, it's a pretty fine grit, so I get a nice smooth um, point, which is perfect. So let's talk about then the colored pencils that you're going to use with Gamsol. I find that the colored pencils that have the richest pigments um, the most concentrated pigments and the softest pigments are the ones that work the best. So I prefer Prismacolors. Now I know lots of people color just with Crayolas, so I'm going to do a sort of side-by-side -side comparison here so you can kind of see the difference. Gamsol will absolutely work with Crayolas, I just don't think that it gives as pretty of a look. So I'm going to start here. I've got a pink, a hot pink, and a violet, and I'm going to just sort of lay down my Crayola color. The other thing about Crayolas is it's, it's more wax and less pigment. So I'm having to press a little bit harder in order to get that color down. It's not um, transferring to the paper as easily as the Prismacolors. Okay. I'm gonna put a, go a little bit darker now with this sort of hot pink color.
and then take this violet and just sort of go around just the edges where the shadows might be. By the way, I'm using stamps from Sweet Stamp Shop. I love these little monsters. They are too adorable. It is from this set uh, called Monster Mash. So if you're interested, I'll put the link down below, okay? So this stump is already a little bit wet, so I'm going to just sort of wet it again. And what you wanna do is you wanna start in your lightest color and work into your darkest. Otherwise, you'll drag the dark color into the light and you'll end up, um, you'll end up putting the dark color where you don't want it, okay? So you start in the light color and move out. So you can see, I hope, how this is giving a nice blended look. You can't, you can't see lines in between uh, where I laid the colors down. It's very smooth and even, okay? So that's with the Crayolas. And you see that the colors are very muted. They're real light and pale. Let me try now with the exact um, similar three colors now of Prismacolors. These are the Premier's uh, Soft Core. And with these, I really barely, just barely am touching the paper. The pigment is coming off very easily. I think you can also tell it's a little bit darker without really me trying to press too hard. Here comes the hot pink color. And then the violet. <laughs> Excuse me. One thing you may notice is I really don't have to be very careful about how I'm coloring. I can be kind of sloppy and messy about it because once I blend, um, it's going to look fabulous. Let me get a little bit more on here. So again, I'm going to start where the pink is in the middle, blend out to the hot pink, and then blend out into my violet. And as far as how much Gamsol to use, it's kind of trial and error. You'll sort of figure it out as you go along how wet you want that stump to be and how much um, Gamsol you want to be on there in order to get a good blend. You can kind of feel when the stump is getting a little bit too dry and it doesn't blend as well anymore, and that's how you know it's time to get your bottle and go back and get a little bit more, okay? So there's the Prismacolors. Um, let me move this up a little bit closer. Maybe you can see both of them a little bit close. Um, the Like I said, the effect with the Crayolas is almost as good. Um, I, I felt like I had to try a little bit harder to push the color around, and I just find that the pigment in the Prismacolors is so much more vibrant. I get a much more, um, a brighter, um, sort of more saturated color. So you can go either way. If you have Crayolas, you don't want to invest in more expensive color pencils, go with those. And then, you know, if you decide that you want to try um, something like a Prismacolor or one of the more, um, a little bit more expensive but more saturated um, artist uh, pencils, you can certainly go with that. So I wanted to talk then now a, about a couple of techniques here while we're doing this. Um, I'm using now the Big Monster and I'm going to show you sort of a similar technique um, with th different colors. So I've got a yellow that would blend into an orange and that would blend into a red. Um, you can do this really with two colors actually. Let's start, let's do one with two. Let's just go with orange and red. So normally what you would want to do is just put down a very, very light, very light wash sort of here of color. And you would want to put the lightest color where any roundness is. So anything that would sort of stick out towards you or where you have um, like a round sort of shape is where you want your lightest color to be. Okay, like, sort of like this. And you, what you want to do with your darker color is kind of go around any place that you want to edge areas like this. And then any place uh, where there might be a shadow, like for example, around this flower, there might be a shadow on this little monster's head. So we'll make that a little bit darker. And then around the edge of the whole monster because it's round. And so the parts that are further away from me would be the edges because they would curve away. And so I want those parts to be a little bit darker and that's gonna show sort of a shadow. So you just kind of lay down the color how you want it. I'm gonna sort of pull this up close to you so you can see that is really not 
careful coloring. You can see all kinds of little gaps and whatnot there. Um, what I do with my bottle here is I take the cap, I tip it upside down and I just sort of squeeze and that's really just to prime this dauber top. I'm not trying to get any Gamsol to drip out, but in case it does drip out, I don't want it to fall all over my drawing. And then you, again, just sort of dab this in until it gets nice and saturated. And again, you wanna start, start where the orange is. I've got a lot of orange. And this one I can feel it's sort of dragging, so I need to get pick up a little bit more. And then you're gonna go into your red, and look how it really just pulls out that color, makes it a little darker, makes it a little richer, a little more saturated, and it just blends it with that orange so you don't see any lines. There are no little white bits like there were when I first laid down the pencil from the paper underneath. And you just kind of go around like this. Now, you can always go back and add a little bit more. Let's say that I wanted the area around the eyes to be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna go back in with my pencil and I'm gonna just sort of add a little bit more color here. That's not quite dark enough for me. And then go back and blend some more. Just use little circular motions, little back and forth motions. And there you go. Super easy. You do not have to be a master blender. You don't have to know about color theory or shapes or anything like that to be able to do this. It's like, it, it's just really insanely easy. Let me show you here how you can use the Gamsol to blend three completely different colors. So I have an orange, I have a lavender, and a sort of brown, or this is actually kind of a golden yellow. Even if the colors are not similar to each other, like these three are not, you can still totally make this work. So here's my golden color. I'm gonna sort of make the parts that would be lit up a little bit lighter where the light would be. I'm gonna take my, my purple is gonna be sort of my, almost like a kind of an accent color here. This is gonna be where my shadows, sort of my, my shadows are. And then with my brown, let's say that I wanted to really sort of darken up the bottom where this little creature is sitting around the flower. I kind of want that a little bit darker. Let's say around here, and give it a little bit more depth around the eyes. Okay, so again, I need to use a different stump now here. So I'm going to first Again, use the, go to the lightest color. So I'm gonna start with my yellow. Look how gold that's turning. I really like that. All right, then I'm gonna go into the purple and pull that out. Now when these colors blend together, since they're very different colors, they may not, you know, it's not gonna look still exactly purple like it did. It's kind of a yellowish purple, brownish purple. And I'm going in and picking up that brown. And if you see, it's still, you see how it looks a little bit streaky? It's looking a little streaky in some of these areas. That's just an indication that I need to put a little bit more on here, really get the stump soaked, and then really go in and push that pigment around. And you just keep on blending it and blending it and blending it until it looks the way you want it to look and you're happy with it. So these are really, wow, not the prettiest colors I've ever seen at all, but it does work and you can blend um, really different colors like this, okay? The last thing I'm gonna show you is how to use your Gamsol to blend to get um, 
a, a sort of light effect on a round object. Like this is a coffee mug that is obviously very round. And what you're gonna wanna do in that case is use three colors that are in the same color family, a light, a medium, and a dark. I always lay down the light one first. I'm gonna leave kind of a strip of white right down the center. And I'm gonna sort of go back and forth. You notice that I'm not making a straight line here. It's kind of zigzagged and jaggedy because a shadow wouldn't really be perfectly straight. I'm gonna go in with my medium color right past that. Almost all the way up to the edge. Same thing on this side. And then I'm going to use my darkest color. On the edge here. Kind of make it a little jiggity jaggedy. All right, for my handle, I'm gonna put the darkest part on the bottom. That's where the shadow would be. It would be darker under there. It would be a little bit lighter here. And then where the light hits it on top would be where the light would be. Okay, so let me get a clean stump. And just like all of these, you wanna start with the lightest color and blend out. I'm not gonna go in a circle though. I want to use this back and forth motion. So I'm gonna go this back and forth. And I'm going right across the white that I left. So really, it's not really white anymore. It's kind of this light green color. Okay. Then I'm gonna go into the darker green, the medium green, rather. And then into the darkest green on the edge. And again, I don't really feel like it didn't quite blend enough. I didn't really feel like the pigment was really pulling like I wanted it to. And I'm gonna go back sort of over this whole area like this. There we go, that's blending great. And there you go. So now your cup really looks like it's got a rounded um, effect if it's not again if it's not dark enough the great thing about Gamsol is I can go back and I can darken up the edges sometimes your darkest color really gets pulled out so I like to go back after I'm done and kind of add another layer there of that so that it's really accentuated there if you still see little streaks just put a little bit more Gamsol on your sponge, or on your paper stump, rather, and go right back to it. And then you just sort of blend all of these together. And there you go, okay? Perfectly, perfectly done and blended. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much the basics of Gamsol. I mean, that's really all there is to it. Um, you're going to need your little Gamsol. I really recommend this one from Inky Antics. Uh, I don't work for the company or get anything from them just because it comes in this great bottle top with the dauber. And um, when I need to, I can pop that off and refill this. Um, so I think that's really convenient. Otherwise, you'd have to dump it into a bowl and then you'd have to dip your stumps into it. They might get over wet. If they get over wet and you have too much, it doesn't uh, blend well. Then you're going to get those you know, icky spots on your paper. Speaking of which, if you look at the back, um, there's a little bit coming through here, but that's going to evaporate and you're going to be fine. So you don't have to worry about splotches. Um, but I really like this one from Inky Antics. I'll link it down below. You're going to need yourself some paper stumps. I just bought a package of uh, varying sized ones at Michael's and then you need the colored pencils of your choice. And then, um, the only other thing you have to do is just practice. Um, have some fun with it, see how the colors work together, see how the blending works, get a feel for how much color to lay down. Um, you can, you really don't necessarily have to fill up. Um, like I did, you could really just sort of go around the edge. Let me show you how, this is a, a totally different effect if you want it um, not necessarily to fill the whole shape, but you wanted it to have some color. 
let me open this back up then I would sort of use a circle kind of a circle blending effect you could do like this so you could give sort of a hint of color like just more like almost like an outline that works too and that gives you a whole different thing if you wanted to stamp another sentiment here that would look cute too so it's really it's this is really inexpensive stuff I think this whole bottle cost me maybe seven or eight dollars um, the biggest investment was in my prism colors um, but as far as I'm concerned they are hundred percent completely worth it because of the great effects that I can get so I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope it was informative and I hope you decide to try some Gamsol if you have any questions at all please just uh, leave me a comment down below and, um, and I'll do my best to answer it for you. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.